Hello everyone, how's it going? Hope you're all doing well. In this lesson, we are going to discuss one of the qualitative methods of predicting sales and providing sales forecast. And this technique is called moving average. Now, this technique is quite commonly used by businesses and the premise or the most fundamental uh, concept with this technique is that you cannot predict your future without taking a look at what's happened in the recent past. So it bases the numbers in the future, so what your sales forecast is going to be in the future months or quarters, based on how your sales has been in the previous quarters and the previous years. So what the company does when they're using a moving averages technique is that they will first look at a, a, a certain time frame. And let's say that time frame started from 2020 and it will go to 2024. And we are currently here just nearing the end of 2022. And let's say we're at the start of 2023. Now what companies do is that they will divide their uh, years into individual quarters. So 2021 will have quarter one, two, three, and four. Quarter one means three months, right? January, February, March is quarter one, April, May, June, quarter two so on and so forth, quarter three and quarter four. And similarly, they will divide all of the years into quarters. Of course, quarters are four, so four quarters in each year. And if we are here, let's say we are at 2023, start of 2023, end of 2022. Previous to this, the company, of course, would have made sales, would have recorded that, would that record would be available for use in the future. And let's say these are those numbers. 25, 21,000, let's say these are thousands. So we have, we have this information that this is what we have done in the past. And this is information that all companies will have available. And they would make a table out of this, something like this. So in 2020, quarter one, the sales were 25,000, quarter two, 21. And these are just, these numbers are coming up from here. So what we do in the end is the company needs to look at the past data and determine can this be used to predict what's going to happen in the future? How much are we going to make in quarter one of 2023 or quarter two? Can you predict that? Of course, that's what needs to be done. That's what sales forecasting is. And moving averages helps us to determine what are your expectations going to be in the future based on how your sales have been in the past. So they're looking for a trend. Is there a trend? Are some months better? Are some months worse? Do we need to do extra promotions in the worst months? Do we need to promote more even in the good months? So that's the sort of decision the moving average will help us to figure out once you have a number associated to your future sales forecast. Within the moving average calculation, there are four types of questions or four types of information that you can deduce from it, or you can calculate. First of them is called your centered moving average. This is a trend that the company is trying to determine. Now, maybe in the summer, people definitely eat more ice cream, so we should expect more sales in summer, and that's something that happens every year. When winter comes around, we see a drop in our sales, and that's something that happens every year. So you're trying to determine, are there any trends by looking at your previous year's data? Then we look at a calculation called seasonal variation. Does one quarter vary when it goes into another year? Does the same quarter bring us more, bring us less? Third would be an average seasonal variation. And lastly, we'll use a graph to predict future quarter forecasts. So let's begin with the first of these calculations, the centered moving average. So whenever you're asked to calculate the centered moving average or the trend, you will be given these three pieces of information. The years, so 2017 to 2020, each year would be divided into four quarters. You can see 2018 is one to four, 2019 is one to four as well. There are only two quarters for 2020 and 2017. That's fine. That's all right. Don't worry about the other ones. And for each quarter, you'd be given the sales that actually took place. So these are actual sales. These are not estimations. This is what happened. And I'm going to call this actual. So. We read this for 2018 first quarter, 40,000, quarter two, 10,000, so on and so forth for each of the quarters. You would also be provided already the centered moving average for some of the quarters, and you will be asked to calculate one of them that has been marked here by X. So this is what you have to solve for X, which is 2019 quarter one 
you want to figure out what's the center moving average at this point. You know, in order to calculate this, there are five steps that you have to follow. If you follow that sequence, you will be able to calculate it exactly every time. And the first step in this process is, remember, this is our starting point, x. The first step in the process is take a step left and make this your base. Okay? Now, this is our starting point. Take a step left. So we get to sales and the number 44 here and make this your base. I'm going to make this my base with the color yellow. Okay. This indicates that I have set up ground here. Now, this number is 44. I'm just going to write that down for reference here that my base is the number 44. Then step number two is make a set of five numbers, two from above and two from below the base. So if I go back to my base there, two from above are 98 and 42. Two from below are 22 and 48. So if I mark these again in yellow again, two from above, two from below, I've now got a set of five numbers. If I can write them down in sequence, that is 42, 98, 44, 22, 48. Okay, I've got a set of five numbers, including my base, two from above, two from below. Then you go to step number three, which is make two sets of four numbers. First set from top four. So my top four numbers in this sequence, now everything else is irrelevant. I'm only looking at these five numbers. So at this point, my top four are 42, 98, 44, and 22, right? I'm going to mark them in blue. 42, 98, 44, 22. I'm going to write down my first set here. My set number one is 42, 98, 44 and 22. Then second set from the bottom four. I'm going to mark them in green this time. My bottom four are 48, 22, 44 and 98. I'm going to write down write that down as my second set. 98, 44, 22, 48. It doesn't matter in which sequence you write them. You could have gone bottom up, uh, but as long as you've got four from the bottom four, four from the top four, you've got two sets of four numbers. Now our focus becomes these two sets because the step number four tells us that you now need to take an average of each set separately. So for set number one, there are four numbers, right? So I'm going to call that S1 is 42 plus 98 plus 44 plus 22 divided by 4. This will give me a number here. And this number is 51.5. Then my second set, I'll do exactly the same thing. S2, I'm going to have to squeeze these number in here. Uh, 98 plus 44 plus 22 plus 48 divided by 4. This gives me a number of 53. So I've got two numbers here that I need to focus on. First one is 51.5 and the second one is 53. Now comes the last step in this process which is to take an average of the results from step 4. So these were the results 51.5 and 53. Ultimately what I need to do is take an average one last time 51.5 plus 53 divided by 2. There are two numbers now. This tells me that 52.25 this is the centered moving average for quarter 1 of 2019. Now, there's only one way to find that out. Let's see if behind this X 
is 52.25 and when I reveal this voila it is 52.25 so whenever you have to calculate it follow these five steps in the exact same sequence and you'll be able to figure this out had this been x if 62 not was not given if 62 was x you follow the same process this becomes your base for three two from up two from down follow the same pattern and you'll be able to calculate the centered moving average for a particular quarter